So I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do a video on. Um, I did two versions of what a SPAC is, a specialty product acquisition company. If you're not familiar with these, they've become pretty po uh, popular here recently. I think the first one was uh, came about in 2013, and today I think in 2020 there was um, like 127 of them who that were uh, went public. Yeah, 127 and uh, 384 looks like 384 million dollars. That doesn't make sense. Looks like there's about, in 2020, there was about 27 of them uh, who, who went public, uh, raised about, looks like $3.8 billion. Um, a lot of technology companies come about through SPACs. It's really sort of interesting process, and I think it, it, the process sidesteps um, some SEC rules that typically when you go public through an initial public offering, um, you, have to, uh, you have to follow these it's a bunch of red tape kind of thing. Well, SPACs creates an opportunity to get around that. So I was thinking about doing that. I mean, it's interesting because it's basically a blank check company. It goes out and raises money, then goes and acquires a company and then takes it public through an IPO. Um, and it, like I said, it, it, there's something about it that gets, they get around the, some SEC rules, Security Exchange Commission rules. Um, and so that's been, I was thought, thinking about doing that and putting a video out on that, but I think I just summed it up for you. Um, and so I, I really just sort of stumbled through the day trying to figure out what could I talk about? And then I thought, well, it's, you know, Friday, so I could do a little market commentary about, you know, because Biden got elected and, you know, or excuse me, Biden, get, he got elected. He got today or the 20th was his inauguration. And uh, now he's president. He's signing all these executive orders, 10 of them last I checked, uh, you know, mandating that, you know, masks being worn on planes, trains and automobiles or not automobiles, but on federal property and all this stuff, kind of stuff. And, you know, and just talking with people, they're freaking out. I mean, I'm getting emails from um, from clients who are, who are like, oh my gosh, have you read this, read that? And it's always the content that is so far right or f so far left that um, they're reading. And it's like, wait a second, read both sides of it and then use your brain and logic around it. But we're all, we all do that, right? We all get emotional. We all get, do stuff like that. And so I thought... It's been an interesting week. We've hit all-time highs again in the S&P, NASDAQ, and so on. Um, but and then today was a Thursday uh, when I'm as I'm re uh, recording this, um, the market Dow was down and NASDAQ was up. Um, and it's a question of where is this market going? And and one of the things I've been thinking a lot about is that you know with Janet Yellen coming in, in into office into the Treasury, you know historically she has been very bullish for markets um she if you go look at the vix the volatility index um it hit its all-time low of nine on her watch and so if you're not familiar with the how the vix works um anything below 18 or so on the vix is bullish for the market it's a measurement of the s p 500's volatility uh, anything over between 18 and say 26 27 is a choppy market. It can go one way or another. And oftentimes if you're a trader, it's a great time to have the VIX between 18 and, and 27 where it bounces around because you can trade it. Uh, anything over 27, it's a, a risk off. It's bad for markets. If you could flip back to March of 2020, the VIX was uh, well up, I think in the 40s or 50s or so. Um, at some point, uh, and, and that means volatility is on, risk is off, and uh, people are buying protection through derivatives or through hedging strategies like shorting stocks. And so it's a very volatile time, but it's a great indicator to tell you when to buy uh, or to uh, scale up your, your loading up on your investment or scaling down. Um, it's a really good indicator. It's one of my favorite indicators is using the VIX along with the other volatility indexes. So there's a volatility of volatility. So volatility of the VIX, which is really interesting. And that is like a leading indicator to the volatility of the VIX, which is really insightful. And so you can use that. I think that's 
uh, VIX is V, 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 I, X, I believe it is. Um, look it up, just volatility of the VIX. Um, there's, there's so many different ways to, you know, really I focus on, you know, three ways to look at uh, markets, what the direction is is going. That's volatility, number one, v uh, volume of the underlying index or the stock, and then the price action. Is the stock um, having higher higher lows and higher highs, which is bullish, or <clears throat> or is it uh, more uh, lower lows and lower highs, and that is bearish. So those three indicators are my, my favorite um, indicators to use before making a decision of is this a long term, you know, is this a, a position that's going to go higher or lower? Uh, is there a directional change coming? Those kind of things. So I've done a couple other videos on uh, the VIX, the volatility, volume and price uh, movement. And uh, so go check those out in uh, how to uh, in my uh, playlist there. Um, and then I just I got to think, OK, where, where are we headed uh, over the next 90 days? Where's the market headed? And I'm actually really bullish. Um, and the reason is, is because this presidency is about printing and supporting markets. And with stimulus packages of 1.9 trillion, that means more money is going in the pockets of people. And if you remember last time when that happened, back in March, April, May, June, markets took off and there were over like 10 million new brokerage accounts opened in 2020 and the amount of margin was at all time highs. I think it was like seven, $720 billion in margin and that's astronomical. So risk was definitely on, risk on and you had a, I mean, go on to TikTok, go on to uh, Instagram or YouTube and you're seeing all these people who like I mean, they're like 16 year old people like telling you, you should buy Tesla and you should buy Neo and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not recommending that. This is not advice. Um, do what you do. Uh, that's your responsibility to do your due diligence. Um, this is merely educational. But some of the stuff they're putting out there, I'm like, really? Um, do you understand that the movement of markets and the flow of money? There's so many, so much dynamic that goes on with markets that we are, we don't think about, or that most people don't put any, you know, interest in learning about. And I think that's the, that's the bad part. It's, you know, markets can be very profitable. And once you start to understand the flow of money and the movement of money and how to um, understand the behavioral patterns and use the tools that can give you that insight, Markets can be very profitable, and I, I think that's if if I've learned anything in the last eighteen months, it's it's that that flow of money element. Um, you know, when uh, when you, we saw a jump in the Fed funds rate back in September of nine twenty, no September of nineteen twenty nineteen, and you know the Fed funds window is basically a um, place where. Um, you, uh, institutions, countries can do short-term overnight lending, meaning they go uh, exchange, say, treasuries to the Fed window. They, in exchange, get U.S. dollars, and like uh, investment institutions will use that uh, as mar to margin up their positions overnight, uh, and then come back the next day and exchange back that money for a small fee. Uh, there's small interest for their treasuries back. And so that is what happened was like in September of 19 or August, August, September of 19, one of the, just in that area, um, we saw a jump in the, um, in, in that borrowing. And so um, if, if you were on it and you had that access to the Fed window, you could have lent your treasuries, I believe I got this right, treasuries, for like 10% interest, like annually. I mean, but it happened so fast. And what happened was um, the Federal Reserve stepped in and suppressed the market, basically flooded the market with liquidity and dropped the, the rate down to normal rates. And if you really look at that, that was like a leading indicator to the, the March um, liquidity crisis we had when COVID hit. 
you know, all of a sudden everybody wanted to exchange their treasuries for um, for U.S. dollars because the country, the world was shutting down, Europe was shutting down, um, all of Asia was shutting down, and these countries needed cash. They needed U.S. dollars because 95% of all transactions done globally are done in U.S. dollars, which is why it's the uh, reserve currency of the world. But you, you think about that liquidity crisis and what we saw back in um, August, September or so of, of 2019 was a liquidity crisis. And it was short term. Most people didn't know it happened, but it happened. Um, and it's not the first time it, it's happened where the Fed had to step in and, uh, and basically provide a backing to, to that market. It's just so fascinating to me because... All we hear about is stocks and bonds, and yet there's currency, there's derivatives, there's all these other types of investments. You know, I mean, the biggest, one of the biggest markets in the world is the bond market. And like the bond market is the like EKG of global economics. And yet we just pay attention to the highest flying technology stock when we should be looking at the bond market. And the bond market can be really insightful to what is happening in the world economically. I mean, if you go back to, was it April, May of 19, 2019, and you looked at the German boon, what you saw was the German boon, uh, the yield went negative. And it was because people were fearful and willing to basically pay to own the boon. That makes no sense. Um, so anyhow, like I said, I didn't know what to shoot a video on. And so I guess I just shared with you some thoughts off my head. It looks like my battery is about to die. But um, like I said, this is educational uh, material. I hope you like the video. Please hit the subscribe button and the notifications. And um, I'll come up with something really good for Saturday. Take it easy.